These are quite neat. They're panel indicators designed for industrial control panels, but the, instead of just displaying an a indicator lamp, they've got a digital readout that displays the voltage, and these things are just so incredibly cheap. Uh, they came from eBay. Uh, I got them from a supplier called Chips Dash Fans, and they were £1.11 each. And from this particular seller, they're available in red, green, and yellow. Now, it's notable to mention that, uh, well, for a start, I'm not sure who put the sticky label over the front of the lens. That's quite annoying. But it's notable that the red, yellow and green ones are using gallium arsenide and gallium phosphide colours. It's the st standard old school technology, which means they're going to be super reliable at the slight uh, downside that the green one uh, is going to be a little bit dimmer than the uh, equivalent modern gallium nitride one. This indicator came from Thomson. Uh, it's a brand that seems to be sort of widely sold on eBay from China called Tomzen, T-O-M-Z-N. And that's where the generator changeover switch came from. And this one's uh, white, and I think they also do them in blue. But um, having said that, over time, my choice of the best type would be the red one, because it's the brightest of the traditional technology and it's very stable. I would reckon the white one is over the space of a few years, it's going to fade a little bit. And these things are supposedly rated from, I'm going to have to read the label here for that, um, from 60 volts to 500 volts. But uh, we'll be the judge of that. We can uh, open this up and take a look at the circuitry. Now, I've brought the fluke meter in here because, uh, well, you know, people tend to look on the fluke as the guru's meter. This is a proper traditional uh, American-made fluke. And uh, I just thought I'd use it as the voltage standard here because it has that reputation. It's bigger, it's bolder, it's rougher, it's tougher. In other words, sucker, there is no other. Some people might get that musical reference. For those who don't, I'll put a link down below in the description to probably a Carol Cox remix of that particular track. Uh, what's it called? Human Resource. Uh, Dominator was that track. But anyway, uh, let's uh, take a look inside one of these. Uh, initially, though, let's uh, take the cover off this one so we can actually see what voltage it displays. So this one's displaying 242, that one's displaying 242. This one's playing 241, this one's playing 242. The meter says 240. Well, to be fair, 240, uh, yeah, it's you you up and down with the sort of ambient supply ripple. Oh, and that's also going between 240 to 242. But that does indicate they're within 1%. Keep in mind, this is just a panel indicator. It's not designed to give you an accurate voltage to the hundredth of a volt. So let's uh, open some of these up. So I'll disconnect them first, seems like a good idea. I can guess what's inside this. I'm guessing it will have similar construction to the uh, the panel mount knee indicators because uh, they tend to have a capacitor inside, and I can already see the capacitor inside here, acting as a capacitive dropper, plus maybe a limiting resistor, and I'm guessing maybe a sense resistor in parallel with the capacitor too, so it can monitor the voltage. So let's take one of these apart. Uh, I shall... Uh, take the posh Toms in one apart, the one with the white display. I'm guessing that they're all probably ultimately from the same source. Maybe not. There is a slight colour difference. This one's got a label, that one's printed. So although they've got a very similar uh, frame, uh, housing, it, they might be from different factories. So let's see if it comes out the front first. This little bezel comes off that keeps it aligned, I'm guessing. The circuit board is not coming out. Now, there's one of those things that I kind of like to... It's got a shiny front to it, but it's, that's because it's got the protective film that's used during manufacture. If you peel that film off, it makes it matte, and that is going to give it a slightly better contrast. But anyway, it's not coming out that way. Uh, the bottom of here might pop off, that does pop off, oop, ah, so similar construction to the others, I'm going to have to cut a wire to get this out I think, I think the wires have been threaded through and then it's been sort of soldered in in situ, I don't think it's going to be easy to get it out otherwise, yeah I'm going to have to cut those wires, rightio, in with the snips and cut the wires. If I can cut the wires, that's really quite cramped in there. As we take this apart, we'll see how it was constructed. These would be ideal in a panel with a three-phase supply because normally what happens when you drop a phase 
uh, you get a voltage anomaly on the phase that has, uh, the fuse is blown will get backfed from the other two phases and you end up with a weird voltage reading and it kind of confuses a lot of people because uh, they see that there is still effectively voltage on that and they think the fuse is intact in reality the power is coming from the opposite side uh, I'm wondering now if I could have no I don't think I could have uh, squeezed that bit of wire through I think it is definitely soldered on there we go oh quite a big capacitor there is the sense resistor as I predicted there is the inrush limiting resistor and sort of fuse so uh what do we have? We have a 470 nanofarad capacitor. That's quite a high value. 630 volts. For 630 volts, um, that tends to... If that's the DC voltage, then the peak AC voltage... Their rating of about 600 volts in this was a bit generous. Uh, 500 volts, should I say. Uh, if it was 500 volts, hold on, let's uh, do the maths. Uh, the peak voltage of an AC voltage would be that multiplied by... So 500 times 1.41 would be 700 volts. But uh, traditional British industrial supply, 415 times uh, 1.41 would peak at about 585. So technically speaking, it would be suitable for a typical... Uh, UK three-phase supply, although I'm not sure I'd be overconfident sticking this across 415 volts. Although, having said that, it should. The sense resistor will not be rated for that voltage. Uh, we have... I'm just going to get my uh, more appropriate glasses on for this one to take a closer look. The sense resistor has the colour brand yellow, orange, black, Orange, is that right? It's quite an odd colour code. Yeah, yellow, orange, black, orange. So that's 430k. Oh, am I reading it from the right direction? It might be brown, orange, black, orange. Oh, I'm not sure with the colour code. I don't think that's a gold band. Uh, hold on, I'll let you see. Hmm, not sure about that one. I think we'll just have to measure it. So uh, let's get a metre in. And measure that. This resistor will also effectively acting as a discharge res resistor, I suppose. So, um, right, that is quite high value. It is really just a sense resistor for the circuitry. It's about 430k. So, yes, it is yellow and orange. 430, yeah, 430k. Yellow, orange, black, orange. So that's uh, 430 and three zeros, 430k. And the brown is, I guess, the tolerance. Uh, again, if it is being used as a meter, then they would be going for quite a high uh, percentage tolerance. I think that's 1% tolerance, isn't it, the brown? Not sure, never really deal with uh, high tolerance uh, components like that much. This capacitor is 330 microfarad, 16 volts. This resistor is uh, green, brown, black, which means 5, 1, and no zeros, so 51 ohms. Um, there is a chip under here, and it's this is just going to be a microcontroller being used as a general sort of display uh, driver. Oh, it's anonymous. That's annoying. Anonymous chip. And then, really, after that, it's just a smattering of other components. A diode. Uh, a couple of diodes. And then capacitor and resistor, probably one resistor is providing a sort of divider reference to the chip's input. And that is really it. And for simplicity, they'll have one resistor limiting the current for the whole display as such. That's a... it's fairly neat. I wonder if that is a dedicated chip then for this task, or if it is just a, a microcontroller that's repurposed like the, um, like the USB power monitors. But it's quite a neat design. It's really very simple. The components look well enough rated, so for standard mains type voltages, I'm guessing it should uh, do okay. Um, I'm quite tempted to take a look inside one of the other ones and see if there's any difference. Let's take another one apart. 
and see if it is a different brand. Similar construction, very similar construction. Yeah, these kind of look as though they might be from the same factory, but uh, with just slightly different branding, but we'll find out once we get inside. So again, I'm having to cut a wire. Not much room in there, it's been soldered in situ. I've managed to cut the plastic, but not the wire. Cutting everything but the wire here. It's pretty much the same thing, isn't it? Different sources, different cases, identical circuitry inside, with presumably the same value of capacitor. Yeah, exactly the same inside. 630 volt capacitor, 470 nano capacitor, um, uh, capacitance rating. So yeah, they're actually neat for the money. It suddenly means that you know it's it's doubling up. It's doing the um, the power indicator and the voltage. Of, of course, I would always recommend that if you go to a panel, even if the power indicator is off, always double check with test lamps. Anyway, I have been caught out when I opened a panel. I turned the isolator off that physically stops you open the panel, and all the indicator lights went off. But it turned out that one phase was still actually live inside it because the isolator was faulty. Um, so uh, just always be careful with that, you know, just because an indicator is not showing anything doesn't mean there's not power still in a panel. But yeah, they're quite neat. I think they're quite smart. My choice would be, for reliability, it would be the red one, because uh, it's got the brightest display of the older technology, and it's the more robust technology, so it's going to theoretically last a lot longer.